Tevat Travel Guide, Volume 1, a magazine by the Adventurers Guild. Each issue introduces great sceneries across Tevat. This issue includes a short traveling diary of Alice the Traveler on her experiences in Mondstadt. Mondstadt Chapter, Tevat Geographic Special Edition, Alice's Mondstadt Diaries. Dadaupa Gorge. The three hilly churl tribes, the Meaty Tribe, the Sleeper Tribe, and the Eclipse Tribe, are located in this valley and are all densely populated. What if we built a huge, spinning, ball-shaped cell in the center of the valley and threw all of the hilly churls into it? That way, we might be able to generate enough energy to power all the mills in Mondstadt for... at least... Five years? If we took it one step further by grinding the hillitrolls that are too old or too weak into food and feeding them to the strong ones, we might just build ourselves a perpetual motion machine that can support a huge factory like in Snezhnaya. It seems totally feasible to me. But when I told Miss Lisa about this idea, she just looked at me and pondered in silence for a long time then change the subject gracefully. Hmm. Star Snatch Cliff. The Animo Archon is a bit too undisciplined for me. If I were a god, I would not have allowed my realm to look so unorganized and ragged. With enough bombs placed in proper positions, even huge cliffs like Star Snatch would crumble into dust in a second. With flatter terrain, Mondstadt would surely look much nicer. But that unctuous cavalry captain rejected my proposal instantly. He even asked me to stay away from Star Snatch Cliff. Windrise. At the center, there is a huge oak tree. It is said that Vanessa ascended there. I searched around the tree for a long time, but did not find any launching device. I grabbed some hilly trolls nearby to put my theory to the test. Sadly, the longest flying distance was from here to the hunter's huts around Springvale. How disappointing. Falcon Coast My unsuccessful experiment caused quite a stir in Springvale, so Miss Jean from the Knights of Favonius arranged someone to keep tabs on me. All I could do all day was to wander around Falcon Coast. This is such a boring place, those stars... Stupid eagles hovering in the sky and puffed up animal slimes all bored me to death. Ugh. The worst of all was that I had nothing to do. On the other hand, the outrider girl who was sent to monitor me had quite a lot of fun with the kids. Whispering Woods. Yet another forest in Mondstadt. This outrider, named Amber, seemed to know her way around this place. The explosive toy she carried around caught my attention. With some tweaks, I could turn it into something that could blow this forest and even the nearby mountains into smithereens easily. My proposal seemed to scare her, but an explosive stuffed toy is indeed a brilliant idea. I must try it out next time. Bright Crown Canyon I finally got rid of that stalker from the Knights of Favonius. This valley I found at the northeast coast of Cider Lake is still guarded by ancient mechanisms, but the soldiers responsible for holding the pass for the King of Gales were nowhere to be found now. All the winds of time had left behind were the unintelligent hilly churls and silent mechanical guards. My attempt to control ruin guards with hilly churls failed as well. The guard split into pieces, and as for the fate of the hilly churl strapped onto it, I will spare you the gory details. Half of the ruins were also destroyed in the process. Storm Terror's Lair Bright Crown Canyon leads to this huge ruin of an ancient city which was built by the cruel King of Gales, Decarabian. The city was built in a ring shape. It seems that every resident of the city had been arranged their own spot between the inner and outer rings. Right in the center of the city was the tall tower where the King of Gales resided. The ruins of the domain of this cruel king who once tried to control his people's lives. 
are now utterly deserted. I blew up a few arcades so people can climb up to the tower more easily. Looks quite good to me. The ruin feels more ancient now. Volume 2. A magazine by the Adventurer's Guild. Each issue introduces the great sceneries across Tavat. This issue includes a short traveling diary of Alice the Traveler and Liwa. Liwa Chapter Tevat Geographic Special Edition Alice's Travels in Liwa Dihua Marsh The northern stretch of the Bishui River turns into a wetland. If you look south beyond the stone gate, you will see a silver grass marsh as far as the eye can see. At the southernmost point of the marsh is an inn sat atop a giant rock. That is the Wangshu Inn, the highest point on the entire marsh. Look south from there, and you will see the Juli Plains. You can also make out the Guyon Stone Forest across the sea. Also, there's a weirdo staying at the inn on the top floor. I don't think I've ever heard him say a single word. Lunch is a true feast at the Wangshu Inn. The kitchen is equipped with every utensil you could imagine, perfect for getting some practical alchemy experience. On the topic of alchemy practice, I've got a few things to test out in my search for an explosion catalyst. If everything goes smoothly, I'll spend a few more days here, then head to the Julie Plains. Julie Plains In the end, I came to the Julie Plains a few days earlier than I'd originally planned. Records suggest that prior to the Archon War, this area was a thriving marketplace. The foxes and wild finches are stunning here. Their fur and feathers have a certain glow about them. But I hear that they can be pests, too. Liwa locals complain that they keep eating their fruit offerings to the Geo Archon. I wonder if that gives them a fruity aroma when roasted. Maybe I should go hunting. Hmm. They run a strict operation at the checkpoint on the main road, but the guards who work there are friendly people. I made a potion from some local herbs and gave it to one of them for his stutter. It cured him. But it did have some minor side effects. He now can't help but constantly imitate everyone he comes across. Not just what they say, but the way they say it. It's uncanny how spot on his impressions are. Juyun Karst I'm told that somewhere amidst the misty peaks of Juyun Karst lives an adeptus, the exact location hidden somewhere in the ocean of cloud. All the Liwa herb gatherers claim to have seen the realm of the Adepti in all its glory revealed before their very eyes in the clouds. Based on personal experience, I can say that overindulging on certain types of mushrooms can induce visions of a similar nature. The terrain here fascinates me. So many of these stone pillars look like they belong deep underground, not here on top of a mountain. There's supposed to be an underground reservoir here. Part of me wonders if all the water was drawn out, perhaps Juyun Karst would find itself back on the ocean floor, where it belongs. My travel companion Zhongli is the sternest person I know, but he seems most entertained by this theory. He won't stop laughing. What an odd fellow. Yeo Guang Shoal I've heard that the fog often rolls in off the sea onto Yeo Guang Shoal. And when it's at its thickest, you can barely see your hand at the end of your outstretched arm. Unfortunately, I didn't make it here in time to see a foggy episode. It's a bit of a shame. There are so many lovely shells on the beach. I wonder how many of them have been there since the Archon War. I strung some of them together to make a necklace, but unfortunately that fisherman from the inn sat on it and broke it. Every last shell brutally crushed beneath his merciless buttocks. None were spared. Not only that, but because he injured himself on the shards of broken shell, I had to pay his medical bills. <sighs> a giant sea snail shell stands on the beach where the Bishui River enters the sea. A kind old lady lives inside. Her family is said to have sailed here on the giant shell, and she spends her time rescuing shipwrecked people who end up drifting near the shore. I think that repurposing the giant shell as a self-propelled boat would make it much easier for her to rescue people from the sea. But after I lost control of my third prototype seashell boat and blew it up, the kind old lady decided she was not going to rescue me from the sea anymore. Guyon Stone Forest This is the site 
where the Geo Archon defeated the sea monster. Some of the great stone poles that pierce the ocean floor still tower above the surface of the sea, though many snapped long ago. The hexagonal stone pillars, formed from a conglomeration of geo energy, are quite intriguing to look at. Viewed from above, one gets the impression that they were deliberately arranged in their current form to make a specific shape on the ocean surface. Maybe that was the real reason the Geo Archon rained down destruction on the ocean floor with his stone poles? Hmm. Maybe it was all just a big joke, albeit in extremely poor taste. Zhongli from Liwa Harbor seems extremely knowledgeable on Liwa folklore, but I've never actually seen him come here. I can see the Wangshu Inn in the distance. I'll bet that weirdo I met there last time is still staring this way now. The flow of the ley lines around here are unique in all of Liwa. Much more dynamic, somewhat unstable. It's as if a great, relentless power stirs somewhere in the depths of the ocean. Perhaps it is the defeated sea monster still writhing on the ocean floor.